Thank you for joining us as Levi continues our study on the Book of Beginnings, the first book of Moses called Genesis. Tonight, as we're going through the Word, I'm having my phone up here. If my phone goes off and it's a certain number, I have to take the phone call. All right? So if I have to take this phone call, all I need you to do is pray. Before we get started, like as always, we like to do Bible questions. Gives you guys a little incentive, incentive to pay attention to your Bible and read. All right. Karen, tell me when to stop. Stop. All right. Is this your card? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Karen's like, yes, it is. Okay. No, no. It's more than one. So, your first prize that you're going to try to win is papitas como hecho en la casa en el canal 6 de video match. All right. Con chile limón. All right. Apparently, these were made by Telemundo. All right, now, who would like to try for these? All right, Joseph. Now, who, who, who sent his sons to Egypt to buy grain? Who sent his sons to Egypt to buy grain? Hey, 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 only Joseph. Yes, Jacob. Oh. You have to raise your hand. <laughs> All right, next. We have Bugles Hidden Valley Ranch. Who would like to try? All right, Michael is going to go for it. Michael was voluntold. Voluntold. All right. Who was the father? Only Michael. Who was the father of James and John? Zebedee. Very good, Zebedee. Yes. Well, it's his first name. Yeah, there is no last names in Hebrew. It's basically what you do. That's why it's son of Ben. Like, like Benjamin Netanyahu? Yeah. yeah. Son of. All right. Next. Next, next, next. Shall we? Who wants to try for the jar? All right, Karen. Okay. Karen, what did Aaron have that budded? What did Aaron have that budded? That's right, a staff. Yeah. I'm not going to throw this. <laughs> Who wants to again? All right. Who would like to go for a king size strawberry dark chocolate Kit Kat? All right, Declan. Here's the question At Pentecost, where did 120 people meet? At Pentecost, where did 120 people meet? Don't tell them the answer. You don't know where Pentecost is? Where did he get people to meet? Give it a guess. Israel. <laughs> Who would like to try? Anyone? All right, Chris, the Pentecost. Upper room. upper room, very good. There you go. And the upper room was not Peter's mom's house. All right. No, I would not accept the upper deck. Okay, this one comes with a double prize. These are Stroop waffles. These are caramel, good with tea, coffee. All right, Evan. Yeah, that was all Evan right there. Okay, how many of Joseph's brothers initially went to Egypt to buy food? How many of Joseph's brothers initially went to Egypt to buy food? I can't answer it to get to the You cannot answer it. You already tried. No. Ten. Ten went. <laughs> Only one shows up. All right, and the last one before we start. Whoppers. Whoppers. All right, Maria. Here you go, Maria. 
Which disciple is believed to have lived the longest? Very good, John. Yes, John. All right, John. John was the one that never died from martyrdom. He died of old age on the island of Patmos. Tonight's title is called Wrestling with God. All right, let's, let's break this down. All right, so starting in chapter 32, uh, verse 22, and we're going to end up the chapter today. It starts like this. It says, And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. All right, now remember that uh, Jacob here, he is about to meet Esau. He's really nervous about the whole thing. He's been sending gifts in advance. He's asking the Lord, what am I supposed to do? He's struggling through this whole thing. He's already dealt with Laban through this whole thing. He is just going at it, trying to figure this whole thing out. And again, Genesis 32 takes place in the year 2199 on the AM calendar. So Jacob would be how old? 90. Close, 91. And Rachel and Leah are 35 years old at this point, okay? So he's a 91-year-old man with two 35-year-old wives. All right? That's, yeah, hey, whatever. So, but we got to factor something here. He's 91, and he's about to wrestle. All right? So, I mean, let's go back, rewind the clock. Sarah was 70 years old going into Egypt, and the Pharaoh was like, who's the babe? All right? No, I'm just kidding. So, so Jacob here, right? He sends his two wives over. He's got the two servants. He's sending the 11 sons. Verse 23 goes on to say, He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent uh, over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him unto the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So this is Jacob saying to this individual to bless me. I'm not going to let you go. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. <clears throat> Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for he had seen God face to face, and my life has been preserved. Just as he crossed over Penuel, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle, that shank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. All right. Now, I'm going to break this down for you. I'm going to look at this. We're going to examine this. Wrestling with God. Wrestling with God. Okay. There's a couple things to really look at in wrestling with God here and then looking at where we're at on the calendar of you know, this week is Passover as well. So Jesus would be doing Passover with his disciples. He would be going on trial, crucified, and, the, and um, buried and resurrected. So this Sunday would be Resurrection Sunday. Um, and the thing is that that trial that Jesus went through was illegal. It was an illegal trial. It was the middle of the night. People were supposed to have seen it. They were not supposed to do it the, the way they did it, running it at night in in a closed area. It was open for the public. If you notice in the book of Acts, when Peter goes on trial, there the whole public can see. And when Paul goes on trial, the whole public can see. That's how it's supposed to be. So wrestling with God, factoring what's going on with Jesus. So Jacob sends his family away to the other side so that they'll be protected. He's still going, okay, what do I got to do? I got to take care of this. And that he can be alone. Sometimes we need to be alone, all right? So we can think. So we can process. It's very hard to be alone. I know people who don't like to be alone. You know why? 
You can hear your own thoughts sometimes. It's easy to stay distracted. And then when we do get alone in this day and age, we're really not alone because then we're on YouTube, then we're on this and that and the other, and you can go on Netflix and Amazon, just watch to your heart's content and binge watch and never have to think about anything going on in your life or what's about to happen. But when you can get alone with the Lord, a lot can happen, all right? In the solitude, Jacob is trying to put together a plan still. So in his mind, he's like, okay, I still got to send them forward. I got the gifts going, but he's still wrestling with this whole thing. And he's, he's seeking the Lord and he's remembering the promise like we talked about. However, in the solitude, God comes to us at a time to wrestle with us in that solitude. It's so important to have that solitude, that one-on-one -on -one in the word, that one-on-one -on -one walking with Christ in prayer and 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 that fellowship and as as a pastor i have that too i have my time with my wife in the morning i have my time alone and then i select people to have time with because the enemy bombards left and right left and right left and right and so it's you you always have to have that and so i'm very grateful for the time i have with my wife because that way we can kind of go we go over a book we're in first corinthians we talk about things we pray for each other we select the time during the week to pray together and then after that, she goes off to work usually, and then I'm left alone in the house to figure out studies and what I'm going to do and what am I going to do with so-and-so and the situation and this or that, whether it's small, big, whatever it is. It's always praying and seeking the Lord, whether I'm going to an appointment or to a meeting. Lord, what do you want, to, what do you want us to talk about? What's going to happen? Or if someone comes to me and says, I really need to meet with you, and I really don't know what they want to meet about, and, and I'm just like, Lord, why do they want to meet? Please don't let them have a gun. So, no. <laughs> so, so a few times I got nervous. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. Mm -hmm. And then, no, I'm just kidding. All right. <clears throat> so, but there's, there's this thing of seeking the Lord. And I encourage you all to have that time with the Lord. And you may say, well, it's so difficult. My life's busy. Yeah, I get it. So is mine. Well, you're paid to do this. Now, what do you think I do? You think I go in my office? You think I come here early in the morning and I just go in there and I'm like, just making like poses like you see. You know? <laughs> Sometimes people think that's what I do. Like, you just pray in the office all day, right? No, that is not what I do. I, I'm busy. There's stuff going on. And so I have to seek the Lord. I have to be ready. And there's this constant, and then there's a constant bombardment. And then there's things happening behind the scenes. If you're on the prayer team, there's two prayer teams here, by the way. There's one that goes in there and prays, and there's one that I have personally. If you're on that prayer team, you know what's happening. You see all the bombardment, so you get all that, all that stuff, all right? So there's madness happening. You need that time to wrestle with the Lord, and it's in that time of solitude God wrestles with us. I also want to point out the difference between wrestling with God and wrestling through the circumstance or the situation. Those are two different things, wrestling with God and wrestling through the circumstance or situation. When we wrestle in, this, in the circumstance or the situation, God is wrestling for us alongside us. When we wrestle against God, we're wrestling against and fighting against what God wants to do in our life, right? And the reality is, if you're going to wrestle against God or you're going to fight against God, you're fighting against your own good. Let me put it to you like that. You are fighting against your own good, right? You are fighting in this way that against every gift that God has for you. And that's the danger of wrestling against God. Your own good, your own gifts. God wants to give you gifts. He wants to help you. And when you wrestle against him, he can't give you anything. All right. It's like a little kid that's throwing a fit. Mom wants to go take someone to take the little child to go get ice cream. Dad wants to take mom and dad want to take a child to go do something special. Right. Whatever is it. That child is throwing a tantrum, throwing a fit. Are you going to take that kid to go get ice cream? Nope. No way. Until the kid calms down and understands what's going on. The child doesn't understand. They're fighting against you. And it's not fair. And then they get that. Right? And, you know, and, and, and you're like, we are not doing anything. We're not going to the park. We're not going to get ice cream. You brave, brave parents who take your child to Chuck E. Cheese. We're not going to that place. All right? It's, it's a special, special place. Anyway. I think it's Chuck E. Cheese. Maybe. All right. So <laughs> the thing is, is that it's the same thing for us. When we fight against God and God's like, I want to give you this gift. We don't get the gift when we fight against him. We don't 
get the gift when we are fighting and wrestling against them. See, the difference is, in Jacob's case, he did not wrestle against God. He wrestled with God. And that's what you want. You want to wrestle with God against the situation. Even if it looks like this. Because this type of wrestling can always not always be against. Think about, has anybody wrestled in high school or college here? Okay. Two people? Three, four, five. Okay. When you wrestled against your opponent in competition was one thing. But when you practiced, were you really wrestling against the individual or wrestling with the individual to better yourself to advance against the real competition? Same thing. All right. It's the same thing of practicing whether it's football, baseball, martial arts, Marine Corps drill, any training of military sorts of weaponry or, or whatever you got to do. It is an repeated over and over practice so that you know how to fight an enemy. It's the same thing. And then in the wrestling with God, blessings come. But don't fight against God. You fight with him. All right. And there's a major difference. Now, the second thing. The question I have is, what does it mean to wrestle with God? And we kind of talked about a little bit. But when you fight against the situation with God, you're learning to wrestle against your enemy. All right? Now, who here has ever wrestled with God? I hope everyone in the room has. All right? Who here has wrestled against God? Okay, the rest of you saints that have your hands down, stop lying. All right? So... We've all wrestled against God. And we've all wrestled with God. Okay? Now, let me put it to you like this, okay? So he's, he's wrestling. He's, he's having this moment of wrestling. He's struggling and tra travailing with him. And the thing is, is when I wrestled with God and I went against God, it, it was that I did not want to surrender my life to him. I knew of him. I knew the stories about him. I, I could tell you the stories about him, but there was areas I did not want to surrender to him. And even while, while I was going through things, even though I knew the truth about stuff, I did not want to surrender to him because I wanted to be in control of my own life. All right. And the wrestling. And so that was the struggle. I wanted my life. And in my sin, I was trying to do my own thing with my own plans. And it never works. And we've all been there, right? So what does it mean to be in the struggle? All right? Who's here been in the struggle? Everyone, right? For marriage, for your kids, for your careers, for what's right. There's some kind of struggle. All right? So when you're in the struggle, you feel inside this storm, right? But this is, again, let's talk about this wrestling with God, not against God. This is the difference. So you're wrestling against God. you constantly saying, I'm in control. I'm in control. I'll be in control. It's my way, my way, my way. But when you wrestle with God, there's this storm brewing. And it's brewing inside you. But it's calming. And it's calming. And it's calming. And you find that the Lord begins to calm the storm in you, right? That the wind and the waves that are beating you begin to calm. And I've been there. All right? You feel and you hear the calling. You begin to feel a stirring in you. The stirring. Now, remember when you heard the gospel? Remember when you heard about Jesus and how Jesus died on the cross to set you free? And he didn't just stay dead, but he resurrected and he overcame death and sin. And he's overcome every disease and everything. And his power and what Corinthians says that he's put every spiritual enemy under his feet. And he's displayed every enemy that held you. So he is the king that's taken every enemy that you had and put them on display. This is why you tell your testimony. This is why it's so important. Because when you tell your testimony, you're basically saying, these all controlled me, but now I'm free. All right. And so that first calling when he spoke to you, when you felt the Holy Spirit drawing you in and you said, man, I need Jesus. I need to surrender my life to Jesus because there's nothing left for me. He's the answer. You remember that day? I hope you do. Never forget it. All right. That battle for your soul. The decision you made to follow Jesus Christ. And then you came to this decision where you said, I want the world to know what the Lord has done in my life. So therefore, I'm getting baptized. So the old you is dead and the new is alive. That's what it was Sunday was all about. 
But there's times where maybe you feel like, man, I need to get baptized again. You ever felt like that? Maybe you were a little kid and you got baptized and you didn't understand it. Maybe you were a baby. Maybe you were like, ah, it, nothing stuck the first time. But you need to go deeper. And the thing is, is the Lord will take you deeper and deeper in his walk. So the thing about it is, if you look at it like this, it's really cool, is there's the Greek and there's the Jewish side, right? Just like prophecy. Greek prophecy is prophesied, completed. The Jewish is it's a circular pattern that overlays over and over and over, like the book of Judges. It's a pattern that can lay over the United States, or there's parts of Isaiah that can lay over the United States. And it's the same thing with our walk with Christ. There's the day where you said, I, I chose to follow Jesus. I chose to get baptized. I, I surrender my life. But then there's these moments where you're walking with Christ, and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and he brings you back to this point. And then you're like, man, I got to get baptized again. And it's not because you're trying to, like, do something about sin. It's kind of like this. Like Ray Bentley used to put it like this. He would, he would do an altar call and he wouldn't have anybody come up. And he said, but I want you to, if this is your first time, I want you to pray this from your heart. But if you've already given your life to Christ, he goes, just say these words as, as like, it's a wedding vows. Like you're remembering your vows to the Lord. You're not asking him to come in again and forgive you, but you're remembering, man, this is, this is how I prayed when he came into my life. I remember. And then you go deeper. So I got, I, I remember when the Lord was calling to me and he was working in my life and, and so things changed. And the crazy thing is, so my parents always were like, you know, the church and, and they went to the mission work and you need, you need the gospel. My mom was always, always like making sure I was good. But as every teenager that rebels, you find your own form of rebellion and you, 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 sometimes rebellion is really bad. Sometimes it's kind of mediocre, bad and Sometimes the worst rebellion you got, got is just, no, I'm not going to sweep the floor. <laughs> That's as far as you went in rebellion. Kudos to you. So now, some of us rebelled. Some of us were that like, where they're like, you're grounded for today. Well, why don't we just go for the week? You're just that kid. You had to be that kid. You know? One week, that's not enough. You know? It's, you had to go deeper and deeper. You need you need. What do you mean you kicked me out of class? Why don't you just kick me out for the whole year? <laughs> All right? <laughs> it's running. You know, some of you are in the military. If you're in late again, you're going to NJP. So why don't we just do it right now? In fact, let's go for court martial. Whatever. Here you go. You know, I'm done doing this. Did you win a prize? Yes, you did. You won a stupid one. All right? Play stupid games, win. Stupid prizes, like they say, okay? But it is in pride and arrogance we do this. So in rebellion. So in my own life, my parents tried to teach me. They tried to show me. There was, there was these moments in my life where I was always like, man, and you struggled. Anybody have this? We're like, I think I'm saved. I'm not saved. Well, my dad's into it. I think we're okay. Well, I went to church. I'm okay. But then it's like nothing sticking, nothing sticking. So my mom goes, you're going to go to Spencer Lake Bible Camp. I'm like, I don't want to go to Spencer Lake Bible Camp. You're going to Spencer Lake Bible Camp. Fine, I'll go to Spencer Lake Bible Camp, All right? I went there, had a good time, met some people. It was okay. But again, coming back, nothing really stuck. Nothing stuck. My parents were like, you want to get baptized? Yeah, I don't know. Should you get baptized? Yeah, all right, I'll get baptized. I got baptized at 14. Why I got baptized? I don't know. I had no idea. I was 14. I did it more because they were like, you need to do it. And at the end, I mean... There wasn't anything that stuck. It wasn't like I got baptized at 14. I'm like, man, my life radically changed. It was just like, eh, right? So just struggling through the whole thing. I go to youth group, hear the stuff, play the Bible games. She looks good. <laughs> you know? And then you, then you, you grew up in church that way. And then you joined the military. And then you tell yourself, I'm good, but then everything's fed to you a certain way, and you're like, I'm out of control. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. It, it's, and what I'm saying to you is this. When Jesus radically got a hold of my life in 09, that was real. That was really, he got a hold of me. So the crazy thing is, is the Lord's changing my life. I'm feeling the call. I'm feeling that to do ministry. I'm feeling to go deeper. I, I, I don't understand it. I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing. 
They, the, the people mentoring see this growth in me. They see me teaching five Bible studies a week. I was teaching Tuesday on base, Wednesday at Wounded Warriors, Thursday Operation Homefront, Friday night here, and Sunday morning at Edson Ranch. And I would teach from 6 in the morning to 11 with Joseph and a few other guys. Chris was there for a season. We, we all went teaching, and I mean, we were exhausted. And I'm growing, I'm growing. There, Damien is a pastor. But guys, there's a major problem in the whole thing. Anybody catch on what it is? The baptism. I told them, I said, yeah, I got baptized at 14. So they took it as like, well, you kind of just backslid. And I said, no, here's my whole testimony. I wrote it all out. I said, this is all the garbage I got involved with, da 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 This is where my brain was. This is what I thought about the war, da 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 So I'm pastoring, and I feel this calling, going, and this wrestling. You got to get baptized. You got to get baptized again. You got to get baptized again. I'm like, wait, 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 baptized again. You got to get baptized it's, it's stronger, stronger, stronger. I'm eating lunch with a friend. I go, here's, you got to get baptized. You got to get baptized. You got to get baptized. At night, you got to get baptized. You got to get baptized. I'm just hearing it over and over and over. But I'm already ordained as a pastor. And I'm like, I go to a pastor friend, who was Ray. And I go, Ray, man, this is crazy. I keep hearing in my head from the Lord, I got to get baptized. I was baptized at 14. Yeah, I kind of messed things up. I, something's not clicking. And, and I explain like what I explained to my mentors that before I met Ray, and they were like, yeah, yeah, you're, this is how it works. And Ray goes, hold time out. He goes, let me tell you something. Ray goes, I've been baptized more than once as a pastor. In fact, I've been baptized five times as a pastor. I said, what? I said, what do you mean? He goes, no. He goes, it's nothing crazy. He goes, let me tell you something. He's going to explain it. It's that whole going deeper and going deeper. So what happened was the Lord goes, I, I grabbed you. I sanctified you. I changed you in 09. I began to work in you. Yes, you're ordained through me, but I have something deeper for you in the ministry so I want you to go and do it like this. So what I did is I went and I talked to Ray before he passed away and he walked me through it. I went and talked to John, who is a friend of mine, whose wife mentors my wife, Isabel is her name. And I said, here's what I'm going to do. And I told my wife got baptized too. And she, she, she got baptized at a Baptist church in Honduras. And she was a believer following the Lord. And I said, I, I feel the Lord saying we got to get baptized together. There's something happening here. And so I, I asked the leaders to show up at our pool. I asked John and Isabel to baptize us. So me and my wife interlocked arms, and we went down together and came up together. And when I went down, the Lord spoke to me very clearly, I'm calling you deeper in the ministry. See, it's not about salvation again. It's not about going back and, like, having to fix everything. It was the fact that the Lord was like, I'm killing the rest of you for what I want for the ministry. And so he changed the whole thing. Now, I haven't felt that desire since because I felt like the Lord has got me there growing deeper and deeper. But I do feel the change in the ministry. And so the wrestling, the wrestling and the wrestling. And so the calling on my life. So if you feel this calling on your life, you're like, I feel calling the ministry. I feel calling to serve the Lord. I really want to know the word of God. I really want to grow in the word of God. That's that wrestling. You're not wrestling against God. You're wrestling with God that he wipes out the rest that needs to be wiped out. And so now all the little tidbits come forward and you wipe it out. And the next one, you wipe it out. And notice what he does here. He wrestles with Jacob. Jacob won't let him go. Do you think at that moment he could have made Jacob let go? 100%. He touched his hip and popped the whole thing. He caused the whole muscle to shrivel. God touches you. You're going to limp or be jacked up. All right? So... Let me tell you something. So God got a hold of me, working in me. And even, even going to war, even everything I saw in war, even uh, the IED, even knowing I almost died, I still wanted I did stupidity. I was being stupid. I was still thinking backwards. And you would think at that moment I would have woke up on the ground and went like, whoa, I really need to rethink my life. In 2006, no way. It took three years. Three years, three years in satanic darkness for me to go, I don't want this anymore. Three years in tormenting by demons. Three years. And a massive wake-up call to say, I'm done. I don't want this. And Jesus came into my life. And it was because of what my wife did. I was, I was living in utter darkness when my wife searched me for six months. And when she found me, it was in this place I was messed up. I was not good. I was screaming and yelling, 
throwing things. And she's like, I lost my husband. He's gone. And she went to my mom and said, he's gone. Our marriage is over. That's not the same guy. And the Holy Spirit got a hold of me that night. And for some of you who know the story, told me to go home. I packed my stuff up. I went home and asked my wife, can I come home? And it wasn't like, yeah, you sleep on the couch. We'll talk in the morning. She bathed me. She fed me. She put me to bed in our bed. And it broke Satan's yoke over my life. And Jesus crashed in my darkness and set me free. And I've never known grace and mercy like that. And I've never known love like that. I deserve death. I deserve divorce. That's what I, and homelessness. That's what I deserve. And because of Jesus, I'm free. See, I wrestled against God, and what I got was demons. Now, Jesus gets a hold of my life. Now I wrestle with God, and I get this. And the thing is, I'm encouraging you as you wrestle with God, this is what you're called to. You either are called in different ways to go deeper with the Lord, whether it's just be a good mom and love your kids and just teach them the word, whether it's be a good husband and minister to your wife because your wife's your first ministry, if it's correct the past issues that you need to correct, Whatever it is that the Lord calls you deeper, but then there's a handful in here. I know for a fact the Lord is calling you to go deeper in ways like me, where you're called to be a pastor. You're called to go deeper in ministry. You're called to preach the gospel. Each one has a gift, but you feel the stirring deeper and deeper. It takes you deeper in the wrestling. So he goes, bless me. What's your name? Jacob. Okay, your name's no longer Jacob. It will now be Israel, for you wrestle with man and God. Oh, by the way, so you never forget. And people go, it's just a dream. It was just a dream. Did you hear about the guy who had a dream? He ate a large marshmallow and he ate his pillow? It doesn't exist, right? It was real. He names the place Peniel, the face of God. I've seen God face to face and lived. Who was he wrestling with? Jesus. Jesus. Now, now you come to the cross. And who do you wrestle with? Jesus. And what he did on the cross. You have to make a choice. You either give your life to Jesus Christ or you don't. You'll either be broken on the rock of Christ Jesus or you'll discover that rock will smash you in the end in judgment. Don't play with it. You have to make this choice. And if you have chosen to follow Jesus Christ, why don't you listen to the Holy Spirit when he says, don't do things or obey me and do this? Because you have to wrestle through it all to let go. Let go. Let the Lord take control and watch what he does. I did. I let go. Everything began in September of 2006. Where the Lord got a hold of me. You know that hip thing popped out? Me, it's the IED. What happened to me in the war and all that? Three combat tours? PTSD. So what does the Lord do? He keeps me functioning. I'm in Him. I read. I listen. I think clear. I function. In fact, it was a mystery at Wounded Warriors for the longest time. They were like, you can't remember you locked your car, but you can quote the Bible. And I'd be like, it's Jesus. Oh, you mean church? No, it's, it's the Holy Spirit. Oh, you mean religion? No. It's, it's God working in me. I, I, used to, I used to be on recruiting, and I used to, like, go to my govy, put something in it, go back to my desk. Can't figure if I put something in my govy. Go back to my govy. Go back to my desk. They would watch me do it six times and go, what's wrong with you? Matt, miraculously, I got people in the Marine Corps. <laughs> I remember we went in. <laughs> I'm talking to the same dude. You want to join? Dude, I joined last week. So, no. (laughs) Look, Jacob limped, so I got stuck with PTSD. When I don't pay attention to God, when I don't listen, I want to do my own thing, guess what flares up? PTSD. I can't function. But when I'm close to the Lord, it's there. See, he broke me to keep me close. You guys, I was telling us uh, on Sunday, this is baptism. You guys ever seen that picture of Jesus holding the little lamb up here? And everyone's like, oh, it's so sweet. It's just it's beautiful. Do you know why the lamb's up here? He broke his legs. The shepherd broke the lamb's legs. So he sits on his shoulders till he heals. And then when his legs are healed, guess what that lamb never does again? Never runs away. He broke my legs. I'll never run away. Did he break yours? 
hope so. Because if he hasn't, guess what's coming? You will be broken. See, here's the thing. Okay, God broke me. He broke me. Right? And, and the thing that you have to understand is this. Everything you think and you know changes in the breaking. I broke. I broke. But you feel peace in the brokenness. You know that there's nothing left to give, nothing left to do. And all the ways you think you understand how to fight is done. There's nothing left. Because you're broken. It's a, it's, the breaking hurts. But the healing is amazing. It hurt to break. Oh, man, it was painful to break. It hurt. But when he healed me, man, it was good. It hurts. <laughs> Satan's nasty, man. And what he does to you. And how he abuses you. But when Jesus comes in, and he heals you, it's beautiful. And it's in that wrestling to know how to fight against, you're free. I'm free. Listen, it all came down to this one statement all the madness, all the craziness, but God. But God. I'm free. Ask yourself this tonight. Are you wrestling with God or against God? And have you really surrendered to Jesus Christ? Are you obeying him, abiding in him, walking in him? And then if you have surrendered, Lord, and he has broken you, what limp are you walking with for the rest of your life? For me, it will always be in here. I'm, I'm not sick. I don't have PTSD. doesn't control me. But it's a reminder of how lost I became. What I would like to happen, have happen now is they're going to pass out communion. All right? So you guys have it in your hands ready to go. But we're going to continue. So that way you have the communion. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, Today's the day to do it. All right? And if you're watching online, today's the day to do it. What better day to do it than today? So, there's two things I want to do. Well, more than two. First of all, is there anyone in the room today that knows they need to get right with the Lord? Okay. So, do you need to give your life to Jesus? So, if you feel... Like her, and you're like, I've given my life to Christ, but I just wish I was following him better. Then now's the time to be like, Lord, I repent. Lord, I want to go deeper with you. And then here's the really brave one. You ready? If you want to break me, break me. That's a brave prayer. That's like, Lord, give me patience. Do you know what you're asking for? <laughs> so, all right. The reality is we've all come to the breaking, all right? We've all come to that. So, this walk with Christ that, that we've gone through, all right, walking deeper and deeper with Him, I want to encourage you in it. This is why I'm like, read your word. This is why I'm like, pray. This is why I'm like, you need to know the Bible. This is why I'm pretty much like, really about, you've got to know Jesus Christ, and you've got to know the word, and you've got to obey Him. It's the only way. It's it. Okay, so let me put it to you like this. Now that everyone's got what they need and, and we're focused. So remember how I said earlier, if I get a phone call or I get a message, I got to take it? We talk about wrestling. So this wrestling that's going on. So there's an individual that's a friend of mine who's in North Africa who is going through a lot. In fact, he's going through so much, he has about 13 days left, and that's it, because they put a bounty on him. It's bad. It's really bad. 
So there's a lot of people scrambling to figure this out. Talk about wrestling, huh? And so the bounty's not just on him, it's on his entire family. So we've been scrambling hard. Phone calls, messages, figuring things out, figuring out what we're going to do. It's, it's madness. And it's to the point where, let me put it to you like this. Um, every effort to figure out what to do is not working. It's not working. In fact, what you guys don't know, because we hear in the media about certain locations of the world, what you don't know from what I've been told, and I'm going to be very careful because of YouTube how I, I phrase this. There are locations in the world where whole villages in a certain country are disappearing overnight because they're being slaughtered. There are 18 Christians a day being killed in Afghanistan because this same group is trying to help them and where those villages are. And the country is, I'll tell you later if you want to hear the country. Um, it's bad. And, and the person said to me, this person knows what they're doing. And his team knows what they're doing. And they said, for the first time ever in their time doing this kind of stuff, helping Christians, there's nowhere to take them. Nowhere is safe anymore. Nowhere. You get my drift? Nowhere. And the borders that we have are closed to any refugee. That's what I was told. In fact, it's so bad that they were doing operations in a location south of here, a little further south-south if you get my drift. And there was a certain group of people that were hired, I'm not going to say who they are due to YouTube, were hired to start killing Christians in those countries. So they're rescuing them. So they're like, we are so thin, we don't know what to do. And even if we could get them to a location that we're, me and the other people are all familiar with, unless they get stability, it's a death sentence. There's nowhere to go. Talk about wrestling, huh? So I, I, it's been like this up and down. So I got on the phone with him. And we talked. What are you going to do? <clears throat> and we prayed. I prayed for him. I prayed for his family. He prayed for me. And I'm like, what are you going to do? And his last words to me was, I'm already a dead man. And we said goodbye. So, talk about wrestling, huh? Pray for his family. He has a grown daughter that's my daughter's age. And then he has two boys that are under the age of 13. And uh, he doesn't know what to do. They, he's basically set up for failure is what he is. There's nothing we can, I don't know what to do short of a miracle. So pray for a miracle. So unless the Lord supernaturally intervenes or opens something up or somebody can do something, it's, it's, it's 13 days. That's it. So... Since he, gave, he, he told me what's going on, I've been scrambling night and day to figure something out with his groups. I've reached out to multiple. So, and they're, they're, they're all run thin. They're running through Iraq. They're running through Afghanistan. They're running through Iran. They're running through everywhere to get Christians to safe locations. And in fact, one of the locations they had was Brazil. And if you're not aware, the government in Brazil collapsed. So there's not even a safe place in Brazil anymore to go. It turned socialist overnight. So it's, it's, it's not good. Honduras is not good. They're socialists now. El Salvador has messed itself up. Do you guys see what's happening on a rapid rate in all the nations? They're turning what? So what is that really in biblically? Antichrist. Antichrist. They're lining themselves up for the Antichrist spirit. And if you're aware of other things that are going on, you have now an alliance with certain nations of the Far East and the Northeast. I'm going to be careful because of YouTube again. And... Now Japan has taken that alliance too, and Brazil and a few others, that they are getting rid of the dollar 
and they're taking a certain Far East Asian currency and aligning themselves. And now the UAE has done that today. So what it means is, is everything is rapidly moving faster and faster to the Antichrist, to the rapture of the church. And the wrestling for my friend is he has already settled in his mind where he will go. So my first prayer request that I sent out, I'm going to read it to you. Uh, <clears throat> this is what it says. I'm not going to say his name. I said, my friend, use his name, who is part of the underground church in Africa, is on trial for death sentence for his faith, and so is his family. Please pray that they can escape the country. Three of his ministers were already killed. He cannot, uh, if he cannot escape, please pray that he goes out praising Jesus, knowing he's going home to his king. And that was on March 26. So since March 26, we've been figuring this out. Praying for a miracle. So wrestling. So here, this is all about wrestling. And the biggest wrestling has been going on over and over. All right. Pray for me. Uh, keep me in prayer. And just, I'm praying that something comes of all this. All right. Now, here's the beauty of this whole thing that's really hard to grasp. It has to do with communion and what Jesus did. That intensity of what he's been through, Jesus went through worse. And Jesus took torment for us that we can't even imagine that they beat him to a pulp that his own mother couldn't recognize him while he was on the cross because he looked like hamburger meat, basically. Crown of thorns, nails ran through his wrists and his feet, spit upon, mocked, his beard plucked out, smacked. And guess what he could have done at any moment? Wiped us all out. But he held himself to the cross so we could be free. So my friend understands that what Jesus has gone through, he gets it. And, but Jesus paid this ultimate price for us. Never forget it. Never forget it. This wrestling that we've gone through. This wrestling with God. Each one of us has come to the cross to wrestle. So Jesus, he has these cups and he has them out. And he's these four cups because he's doing Passover. And the first cup's unity and the second one's wrath. And the third one's redemption. It's the cup of redemption he takes and says it's his blood that's spilled out for us. And it's the matzah that he, from the afikomen that he takes and says it's his body. He drinks the cup of wrath for us. We get to drink redemption. So when Jesus took the bread and the cup, he broke the bread and said, this is my body. That is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And taking the cup. He said that this is his blood. That is spilled out for the remission of sin. To do this remembrance for him. Of him. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for all you did on the cross. Thank you that you have made a way to set us free. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we pray for us, Lord God, to help us to remain strong in you. Help us to stand for what's right. Help us to be like you and to love people and to preach the gospel. And Lord, I pray for my friend and I pray for his family, Lord, that you do a miracle. I pray that you would... Whatever your will is in this situation, Lord God, that your peace surpasses everything and that you would give him peace and give him rest. And Lord, and give me peace and rest. Lord, I pray for those who are know the situation, who have been praying that they continue to pray. And for everyone here that would continue to pray. And Lord, I pray for those who are involved to figure out things, how to help them, Lord God. Give them wisdom, go before them and help them. And Lord, you can do miracles, so we're praying for one. But if it is your will for other plans, Lord God, I pray that you would prepare him, his family, 
and everyone, Lord, that is going to be affected. In Jesus' name, amen.